Hi everyone, this is Todd Talks. I am joined by uh, Dungeon Master Jim Davis and D&D lore expert I'm just saying it. I mean, uh, listen, I'll take the credit. Like, you know, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're diving into Unearthed yes. Arcana today, and it's a big one. So we're going to be pretty rapid fire about all of this. Mm -hmm. um, so the new Unearthed Arcana has th three new subclasses. And I don't yes. think I've ever been more divided in my brain. Uh, oh, between, yeah. They're just, I like all three. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've let's just dive into the Rune Knight. And the Rune Knight, I very specifically like a lot because I played the Giant Soul Sorcerer, and I actually play tested mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I got to play that with Jeremy Crawford, um, right. I believe at Origins, but I'm not quite sure. And mm -hmm. um, that just that play test session, he was like, "Okay, this needs to change." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it was like, "Okay, it's very because Todd is." Todd has chosen to be a mountain dwarf so he could get his armor. He could get his, uh -huh. I think, weapon proficiency uh -huh. as well. Um, but I'm not quite clear if that was true and get that constitution bonus. So it worked with yeah. the giant soul features. And he's like, yeah, this should be a fighter because Todd's playing it like a fighter. Yeah, like I know that uh, uh, Pruitt played one. Uh, my brother ran a, a a game for us, and so it was like me and Pruitt, uh, and I was like a monster slayer ranger. He was a Goliath giant soul soul sorcerer, and it was like, geez, man, <laughs> that is nuts. <laughs> but I love the flavor of it, right? And yeah. so I like when I was reading through this, like uh, the first thought was like, okay, giant lore features heavily in here. I, I immediately thought of like the rune priest prestige class from like pre xanathar's fifth edition <laughs> and yeah it and was like i played around with that prestige class for a while and like mixed it a bit with eldritch knight and and sort of like oh that would be a pretty neat class like you buff your shield and your armor and stuff but i really like the second incarnation of this uh and i now that you mentioned yeah. it, i can see giant soul uh, a bit in that yeah i am um, i am kind of in love with this because i have mm -hmm. Uh, one of my favorite characters that I play is named Torvin, and he is a very uh, special boy. And <laughs> he's a super Viking Bane, a little bit magical kind of type type of guy. Uh, uh, but well, I really like this because it gives you, you know, we don't have to go through all the features. It gives you a proficiency sure. in smith tools. Never had this, has, has this made more sense uh, mm -hmm, because you got to mm -hmm. carve those runes. In fact, actually, old Viking runes are the way they are because it's really hard to carve runes. And that's why sure. they're so jagged. Whereas yeah. the, the the runes that we see, if you're wondering, for the Rune Knight are based on giants. Those runes were actually yeah. designed by Richard Witters, and they're fantastic. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, love his stuff. So the Rune I like magic, them because yeah. So go, I was gonna say, oh, no, like, go the, ahead, finish your thought. The question that I had was sort of like how they correspond, uh, and I I have not done the. They're like looking at that old on Arthur Arcana and Storm King's Thunder and this, but I'm yeah. curious as to see like the evolution of some of these features because, like, you get these six runes and they're all based on like the six classic giant types, and yeah. I can easily see them being reflavored into elemental runes, into dwarven runes, and the like. So you're not necessarily tied to giant lore if you're willing to do some reskinning and, and reflavoring, but right. like. To me, immediately, what I start thinking of is like, this is where I, I see the choices here as being really cool. Number one, like, I, if I was an arcade archer, I might be a little jealous of <laughs> what the Rune Knight's getting. Um, a, little but jealous. It, it, a little jealous. But I see like a lot of things that rely on uh, saving throws. So, like, you're casting proficiency and the fact that it's intelligence and not like one of your uh you know strength or con is going to be tough you know I mean, and whereas i see like eldritch knight they can cast a lot of like buffs and boosts and things on other people and you know their stuff with damage might rely on attack rolls instead of uh, saving throws um here you know there's some really cool stuff like fire can restrain <laughs> you yeah. know stone stone can incapacitate <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's stuff that i want to have thought of myself and that's why i like it's a mm -hmm. little bit not what what you would expect yes but i also i also love it now like now that it's there and the idea is there i love it and i actually think that it's a good idea for, to have the rune knight have intelligence in there specifically yeah. because this is a very powerful class a very um it, it it's a powerful class 
it's a yes. powerful subclass. I think forcing you to have an intelligence as your your you know the saving throw is a good thing to do. This way you can make yeah. have because you're a lore keeper kind of. I mean, in a sense, you 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 you. This is the more intelligent, maybe even an archaeologist type of fighter who's trying to discover these runes and figure out this magic. That, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. you know if you're not a Goliath, you know, or you know if you're, I can see Goliaths being rune knights and, and it's sort of like tapping into that connection that they have. But you know, dwarf that's adopting giant runes to fight giants, then you know you might be. I don't know. I can see how, how I can see intel. I can see where you're going with that intelligence and lore. To me, I think wisdom would have been the better of the of the two because we've got like int with eldritch knight, and wisdom mm -hmm. would kind of give you. It's not quite a, a cleric analog, but you're still sort of tapping into like the primal sort of power of these mm -hmm. runes, right? These are these are magic uh, words essentially that conjure force and power just by their yeah. very form. And so to me, that speaks of like uh, wisdom, almost like you, uh, an, an intuition uh, based casting. But um, mm, I like that. Yeah. I, I, first, we, it's a synergy between Rune Knight and Swarm Keeper, uh, right? Because you're both having to use your, your tertiary stat uh, more. Yeah. But uh, I like that. It's uh, speaking of just the individual runes themselves, it's going to be hard to pass uphill. Like, yeah. it's just. <laughs> It's just going to be hard to pass it up. Uh, it makes you a better fighter, and D and D rewards specialization. I think. I think it always has to across editions. Like if you double down on a thing, um, you usually oh, it'll reward it, you. Oh, I really oh, like right. the rune magic. I, I really like that right out of the gate that you have all these options to custom make your character. Your character. I already have uh, character art in the works based off the oh, subclass, yeah. so I hope it survives. Um, like frost rune. I, first off, each of these runes has a passive ability and an ability that you can invoke, which is sure. really, I mean, this, there's so much utility here. You know, the yeah. fact that, uh, you know, you can get you know, bonuses to, if you've got the frost rune, you know, you can get wisdom bonus to animal, animal handling and charisma intimidation checks. These are like, they're not random, but right. they're very, it really they're lets you flavorful. play a very interesting fighter. It really does. And to me, this is where like I, I've seen some some sort of uh, not criticism, but just sort of pointing out like, hey, these are odd. None of these are like necessarily fighter skills. Well, although I guess animal handling is, but like say sleight of hand and deception for cloud seems like an odd kind of like, how would that work? But what if your room night is, is, you know, you're reflavoring something or reskinning it and it's more you're tapping into kind of elemental power what if they're like an ergonasi or or something else something where they have a good dex and maybe you've taken a background that lets them have some of those skills i i see like i don't know i like that they're off kind of uh like they're just different right like when would you ever you know when would you ever want to have double tool proficiency in something for say like fire's passive benefit Except, yeah. you know, maybe you're the party trap disarmer or something. I don't know. That's um, the thing. I I, I, yeah. I don't know. I think a lot of people can make this work. Like, I I, am, I really like this. Not It's not weird. It's not what I expected. And uh, I already like it's messing around with some of this stuff. Like It's different, I and like, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can see the frost rune. You, you're more in tune with animals or just animal instincts in general. That's why you're good at intimidation mm -hmm. as well. The fact that mm -hmm. you, you, you're going to get that strength plus two is hard to say no to. Yeah. Um, sky, yeah, yeah. Uh, the cloud rune, I, I dig, I do dig it because this is like that Loki thing, right? Like you inscribe this, Ooh, this, this is, rune yeah. and you, you get this, you know, this advantage on, your sleight of hand checks and your deception mm -hmm. checks. So I feel that's very in the realm of the Jotun, right? Like if you look, yeah. if, this is very Norse mythology. And keep there's very much that, that, yeah. Yeah, in mind, that explains these advantages. And wow, when you, that, the sky rune, the cloud rune, basically, the fact that mm -hmm. you can channel damage away from someone else and put I that like on somebody that. else. Like, that's really cool. That's a really I cool do. feature. I love any of feature that does that, like Oath of Redemption. Yeah. I like making people pay for the damage they do or deflecting <laughs> like Drunken Master. Yes. I love yes. that stuff in video games. I love it in D&D. I want more of it. So this is like one of my favorite runes, hands down. And it allows yeah. me to play a little bit more sneaky fighter. 
right? Like you Loki. can't like it. Right, it's sort of like a lot of these runes seem to suggest like Goliath or or big beefy, you know, kind of fighter with high strength, and you know they're they're over there with their hill rune, getting their yeah. uh, you know whatever, and get or maybe frost with their uh, strength buff. But I can also see a much more lithe, graceful, dex based fighter taking advantage of these, especially if you reskin them to be just like elemental powers. Right. Stop trying you to know, these, these man. Roots. I'm telling you. <laughs> you, you don't think you don't you, you want to stick with the giant? Oh, you, well, that's right. You I, love giants. I love giants. I love giants. Yeah. No, one no, no, thing no, I want to point I, out. I got you. But one thing I want to point out, like I think the where I see the animal handling coming, animal handling coming in for frost, is like frost giants usually have winter wolves and white dragons that they've tamed as pets, yeah. and so like to me of all the giants, the frost giants are the ones that are kind of terrifying because they come with giant sized minions. Yeah, <laughs> like, and so I, I i sort of like that and and i would almost to those that are giving you advantage on certain skill proficiency roles would add like almost a magical rider to it like maybe your animal handling can work on things big you know greater than beasts or oh, your charisma yeah or, that's, that's you interesting, know yeah you know yeah, or like you, you like could your use charisma your bonus to anything gigantic including dire animals and, yeah uh, yeah that, something that like that interesting Mm-hmm. Especially, yeah, it's like just, you know, you're you're part of their world now by invoking their magic, kind of thing. There's there are different rules, maybe that that uh, that govern interactions with people that know. I don't know. Uh, if we're if we're leaning like, into the giant lore, yeah, yeah. Uvar, well, clearly we are. Um, yeah, <laughs> Uvar Storm Rune is uh, yeah, yes. glimpse of the future like a storm giant, and when you inscribe this rune, you gain advantage on intelligence or con checks. I think that's really fantastic if you want to play that smart. You, uh-huh. you, I, I see this as kind of Floki from Vikings in a lot of ways. Sure. You, and also, you can't be surprised for as long as you're not, you know, as long as you're not like knocked out. That is strong. Um, that's too. That, that, that's totally strong. That's the one again, ability in fifth edition I ban from my tables is immunity oh, yeah. to surprise. <laughs> yeah. I just it's one of those things where I I like remove so many. Uh, tools from the dm's toolkit that i'm like ah we'll give you advantage <laughs> but no immunity I, I don't i don't surprise them too often but i do kind of like that i mean yeah i can see you know you have this rune master and he's got runes all over himself yeah. and he's just kind of meditating and he just Especially sees like the danger before it happens yeah, yeah this is like the diviner but for for fighters um, oh sure sure and again like i i like this i don't think any of this is breaking the game at all it just allows so many different kinds of really cool flavors, and it takes a while yeah. for this to build up and stack. Sure, uh, to to, you're to only be super two powerful, and, and you only ever get yeah. four max, right, or five, right? There's always going to be yeah, one. Five, that you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're never you're you're never going to get all of them, um, which is totally fine because by then you're already like a monster. Sure, uh, but so now one the, of those the fact that you could also thunder. sixty feet, you can make an attack or any saving throw or ability check. Um, Use your reaction and have the roll have advantage or disadvantage. It's pretty yeah. fantastic. That's really cool. I, it's sort of a, I mean, I know that it's, you'd have to, we want to reflavor it and, and like work in the specificity of it. But I like that this is a fighter that offers buffs to themselves, support. Like I know earlier I made a comparison to like Arcane Archer. And I think like the per use abilities, I, I, mm-hmm. I think Arcane Archer uh you know it would be on the short end of the stick with this but for me i see this as a, a great alternative to the battle master uh yeah. as as sort of like you've got these abilities and they you know they refresh on a short or long rest uh you've got a lot of things riding on your short rest now <laughs> I, I would argue that there is too much utility in the battle master and that is an issue and this is yeah. kind of a nice magical answer to that and sorry i was like reading that from the storm rune i got a little bit lost um yeah. So yeah, the sky rune is very strong. I like I, the stone rune is. Uh, I mean, you get advantage on insight checks. You have, you get dark vision. That's pretty fantastic as well. If you're playing sure. just a human um, or a dragonborn, which would be really uh-huh. weird if you're playing a dragonborn and you're into to <laughs> to giant yeah, runes. that would be weird. Yes, there's there's that would a, be very there's weird. a there's a component to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then. 
let's see what is, what does this one do i forget what the what what you can end up doing um you can incapacitate with stone you incapacitate uh, a creature oh you charm them that's right yeah yeah it's uh, really like that because because yeah. stone giants have that dreaming they don't think anything outside the cave is real right they think that it's a dream world and i i, I a lot of thought went into all these runes in terms of like them being associated with those giants and i, I think I, this yeah. is super strong not overly powerful i think because you can just like okay how about we no fight and then leave have, have we seen a class or a subclass option yet that has this strong of a tie to the lore of dnd like the specific lore of DD, because this is dnd specific lore this isn't like oh giants are like this and that this is like no this comes out of all the you know various editions and stuff and to me this is the maybe the strongest one i've seen that, that really ties it in and i love it I, w I would take all of them with this level of of detail and this integration into the lore why possibly might be the most D, &D subclass because like draconic yeah. soul sorcerer at least you know has that element as well okay these are very clearly yeah. tied to D, &D dragons that's true um, that's true yeah so, so there is an element of that but this is overwhelmingly D. &D. Yeah, you know, I mean, you've got class no features named after in the in the giant language. You know, that's yes. the kind of thing that I think of, right? You don't have draconic um, in the draconic subclasses, unfortunately. I think that's part of the reason I might love it so much is now that you mentioned that, like, it is so ingrained in the fabric of D and D, and even like the the runes that Richard Witters, you know, the artist, mm -hmm. has already drawn and stuff. That I'm like, okay, well, I know what the rune looks like. Yeah, that's fantastic. Like, I I, I yeah. know what all of this is. Um, yeah. but you don't have to know this stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know Storm. you don't want to reskin, but you could. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Storm. Man. <laughs> Anti Jotun. Uh, uh -huh. yeah, the Storm is the one that gives you advantage on, you know, the Arcana checks. I think we already read through that. Mm -hmm. Um, that's pretty good. Oh, oh I missed cool the fire. Did I miss the fire rune? Somehow? I think we jumped around yeah. a bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's my fault. Oh, yeah. I am because I'm a mess here with a uh, scroll like. <laughs> Yeah, the hill giant stuff is like, I mean, hey, you're getting resistance to poison damage, and you have advantage to saving throws. But when you when you knock this out, when you use the the uh, bonus ability that you can only use once, mm -hmm. you get you know resistance to wait you you gain a bonus and you use your bonus action, gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. This is very kind of barbarian stuff to do. Mm -hmm. um, that makes sense for hill giants because. You know, you're not so great at things. Let's face it. Yeah. But you're good at surviving. You're good right. And I, to me, this is the I, I would be hard pressed not to always take this as one of my first ones because I yeah. you know, by the third level, that's really good. It doesn't go away with magic, you know, it, it's like all all of it. So yeah, and so I it sort of makes the fighter a better fighter. And then you can just the rest of them are just cake. Like which what do you want? Do you want to restrain? Do you wanna you know buff to some skills that you might have taken a proficiency in on a on a, you know just a whim or or some stat some strong status effects like crowd control it's a great subclass yeah yeah the fire one's interesting you're right because yeah getting that double mm -hmm. proficiency bonus with a tool mm -hmm. i mean that's kind of cool i was like i i don't know and you can think about like if you did thieves tools let's face it you're you are a very good thief now yeah yeah <laughs> because you know, you know break it, locks sure and uh, i like honestly there have been plenty of times when i've rolled up a rogue and i've been like all right i guess i'll use one of my expertise slots on these tools because i do not want to fail these roles i want to be good at this so i appreciate say having an artifice or a rune knight in the party who might be able yeah. to, to shoulder that and i can you know throw an extra proficiency in something like insight <laughs> And again, you 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 take this and you've got this Loki esque. Like I can deflect damage. I'm really good at these intelligence checks, and I know how yeah. to like basically break any lock I can find, or like I, I have yeah. a great smithy. You know, if you're a dwarf, so dwarves have a reason to like really focus up on this. Um, the shackles definitely. You, if you hit someone with an attack, you can cause them to be restrained with fiery shackles that do two d six points of damage. They don't succeed on their saving throw you want to make a uh, a bounty hunter yeah. <laughs> yes does a little bit of damage at the same time that's pretty cool and totally random like but seems pretty fire gianty gianty as well i like that it's not just a big burst of damage i like that all of these aren't just a big burst of damage 
I like yes. they give you something more because fighters don't need help. They can lay the hurt on no. the things, right? And so I like that it offers more to the class. It offers complexity, new resources, new features, different combinations of things. I just really, I really enjoy this one. And that's just one feature. That's <laughs> there's not there's a whole other sub. There's like how many things does this class get anyway? There's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you you can only choose two. <laughs> You're not getting all of these things no, right away. You're no, getting the choice. Right. It's 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 hard to it's hard to forget. Um, Lots of so yeah, once we get done with these, I, I love all the runes how they function. I can make a mm. very interesting. I think two of these knights could be completely different characters depending on the players that you have. Um, it, and it definitely has theme. And uh, everything that's coming out on Earth Arcana right now tells a story. Uh, oh yeah to the nth yeah. degree which i love so finally at third level you get giant might this is a feature i'm afraid they're going to move up after testing higher up in level that bothers Seems me like only because you want to go giant right away though i want to go mm -hmm. giant third yeah. analyze me any other way but like please I don't go... let me be a medium <laughs> don't make me wait till seventh level i just want to get large so yeah. uh this allows you if you're small uh if you're smaller than large so you could be small you can be medium oh uh, i didn't i didn't pick up on that that's cool oh yes oh, i already made a I, I already made a goblin uh miniature yes hero oh, you got a big goblin like a tiny little goblin and then a seven foot goblin and it's oh ridiculous i love big looking. goblins yes i love big goblins. <laughs> yeah so i've already been working on that concept. oh my god uh yeah so, I, I could see a rock gnome myself but yes i like that yeah yeah <laughs> totally yeah totally and <laughs> You gain advantage on strength checks, and you 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 do an additional one d six. It's not game breaking, but you got you have so many attacks as a fighter. Sure, this is just, it adds to it. Um, I don't think this is abusive or overly powerful. I I, I think you're you become quite the grappler, and uh, I yeah. would be sorely. I would definitely take some grappling. Like I would definitely put a lot into athletics now, right? Sure, and. Uh, and I don't imagine like wrestling, grappling. I, I imagine you're just like picking people up like Darth Vader, manhandling, right? Yeah, you just yeah. Like, <laughs> you lift <laughs> you lift someone by their throat. Like this is the so, character who's just like no. So a a, a a mystic immortal can get huge. They can get using their growth power, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. so I don't I don't think that you can. I think uh, blessing of the All Father, the last one, does something different, but. I was I was sad not to see the ability to get huge, and like <laughs> you know what I mean. I was I was too. I would like to get huge because giants are technically huge, except for you know ogres and trolls. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I thought that would be cool. So uh, defensive, <laughs> yeah, defensive wow. runes I love because again, a lot of these powers help other people. Like the fact yeah. that you can deflect damage with one of the runes and send it somewhere else. Yeah. Please don't lose that. That is one of my favorite single-handed runes, and it's something I just adore doing and such an evil thing to do. But the defensive yeah. runes, you can now use your, your intelligence modifier as a reaction to basically yeah. give people kind of like shield, depending on mm -hmm. how much your intelligence is, intelligence is you know, a bonus to the, their AC within 60 feet. I love it. It makes yeah. the fighter yeah. like... A li in the way, same way that the heroism paladin is very fightery mm -hmm. this is kind of very paladin uh, very paladin fighter in in, in certain regards yes like it, definitely it, you got enough defense enough group buffs going mm -hmm. on that you can play that that way um i like yeah. the defensive rooms quite i think to me i like the defensive rooms mechanically and i like seeing this feature on a fighter I'm having trouble yeah. wrapping my head around it, like from a uh, an in-game perspective. How, like, if I've let's say I've got a, you know my hill rune or whatever on my armor, how that power that's embodied in this you know engraved thing gets transferred to someone else? Like, I like just like there's a narrative uh, leap I've got to make that I'm not able to yet, uh, and so I'm searching for ways to get around that, reflavor it maybe. The way I I see it. If they wanted to change this, which I don't think it's too powerful now, mm -hmm. I am a fan of warding. I think if you put this rune Ooh. on someone ahead of time, yeah. that makes narrative sense. So I can it's see not like that. you just yeah. fling the rune, but you draw a rune on, on someone you want to protect. But if you're going yeah. to make that stipulation that you have to determine who has the defensive rune ahead of combat, 
mm-hmm. or just in general, then that, you know, that's a severe limitation. I, um, you could, I mean, I would say that, you know, something like um, warding bond, uh, the, the cleric spell has a similar yeah. kind of like you have the, the person bonded has to be wearing, uh, you know, an item. But every time that I've seen it in play, it's that the cleric early on has multiples of the item fashioned for the party members. And in that case, if it's like I, this is from a DM perspective, I would be like, yeah, it's a rune that you inscribe on something else that allows you to use that. And so in that case, maybe I'd let you have up to one plus int bonus in, in defensive okay. runes that you can spread around, you know, so it, See, at least it that, covers that, the party. That I like, you know. like some, everyone you've inscribed with this rune, you determine who that way you can't yes. just randomly associate with someone you don't know. Right. Um, you have to have some yeah. connection to them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, then yeah. then th- this makes perfect sense. Then I think that's mm-hmm. a good mm-hmm. compromise. Yeah, that's good. Um, great stature. You just get bigger. <laughs> yes. I, I like it. <laughs> they're, they're, they all the, they're not going to let you be huge, but I like that I can be bigger. <laughs> just a little bigger. It's a nice little bit of flavor, actually. It's just yes. like, okay, you're a little bit taller. You get, you now, instead of 1d6 from the giant might feature, you get 1d8. That's, That's not overpowered, but now you're doing, a, you're, you're doing better. Yeah. And it's, it's layering. Seeing a lot of powers that just layer mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It makes me very happy. I don't think this is an overpowered fighter. I think this is a fighter. Who can go toe to toe with the Battlemaster? Let's yes. face it, the Battlemaster is probably the most powerful fighter there is. It has the most yeah. utility. Eldritch Knight can't yeah. even come. I mean, as much as I love the Eldritch Knight for a variety of reasons, it's it's there's not an argument to be made in terms of like versatility and and just raw potential. Battlemaster is it to me. And you can still make a, a you know yeah sure you're getting these strength bonuses but you can still make a dexterity based giant out of this you know giant dude mm-hmm. um and you can certainly. certainly be throwing axes like crazy um, oh yes so yes. 15th level root yeah Just <laughs> oh, yeah, dwarven thrower. yeah yeah you're like a mean oh, proto boba fett right you're throwing your <laughs> your fire rune yes. throwing axe you hit somebody and shackles go around them Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Still have a hammer um, of thunderbolts. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Once you start getting that stuff too, if you're DM, you're hammer, like you thunderbolt, yeah, hammer of thunderbolts, <laughs> things are getting super Norse. Yes. Uh, rune magic mastery. You now get some more runes. Um, you can yeah. use the rune features more than once. Super great. None of them I feel are overpowered. I think at 15th level, that's a good. It's a good thing. I think it's a good thing at 15th level, don't yeah. you? Yeah. You, you get yes, to use definitely. those special abilities twice. Um, and then blessing of law father. This one's a little weird to me. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, you can make someone else in your party, um, large as well mm. within 60 feet uh, of you. I know. I like that. I like that because oh, it's sort of, it's yeah. sort of, yeah, it's sort of like the, the twilight, the twilight clerics. Now everybody can see in the dark, uh, yeah. feature, uh, yeah. because it's like, um, I don't know, you know, if I'm in this party and I'm a barbarian, and there's a fighter in the party then for 18 levels we've yeah. been we've been trying to one up each other with who's the more hulk oh, right yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and that could go either way that could be a friendly in character sort of banter or it could be like a sticking point in one player who's like hey i thought my shtick was i was gonna be big and strong and right. you know they but and uh, okay 18th level to come online but still i like the idea of, of finally this moment it's like the the uh the predator uh you know with uh, <laughs> coral weathers and uh schwarzenegger <laughs> the arm <laughs> like yeah yeah barbarian yeah. and fire gonna come together <laughs> ridiculous <Get big. laughs> handshake uh yes. yeah yeah i i i, I, I can oh. see that now um there needs to be a rune knight and jocks machina yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> well i'm definitely playing this class so uh yeah, it's fun the blessing of the whole father is yeah pretty great it's great for the party i see you having that moment where you inscribe the rune and mm-hmm. you give someone else the power to be like super huge whether it be a ranger or yeah. barbarian or you know you know yeah. anyone really and you yeah. can have some ridiculous moments right like you have no one else you can cast on you cast on the halfling who is like you know a wizard or something yes. <laughs> for no reason yes. <laughs> suddenly becomes a threat uh-huh. Um, yeah, so some interesting things can be had. I I do love the Rune Knight. I like the yeah. lore. I like I, that yeah. so steep in D D giant lore. 
Um, it speaks to me. It's uh, it's you a hard it. one for me not to play. So I, I, yeah. I will be playing. They've been, this they've been picking your brain uh, for these uh, subclasses this entire time. What magic did you use? Like what, I don't what know. Kind of, I think everyone everyone comes up the, with the same ideas, but like <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, to Jeremy Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Yeah, my uh, soul sorcerer. We got the rune night now. Uh, oh. Lurker below, waiting for yeah. my paycheck. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, just saying, just saying. Anytime you want, talk business. Um, so, get us a thrower, yeah, no. Todd. Get us a thrower. <laughs> well, this is a good reason for me to like work out more, like to lay, lift more weight, oh, yeah. so I can do my 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 freaking rune night cosplay mm-hmm. yes yeah. <laughs> i'm already six foot five i have an affinity with the rune knight yeah. i want a reason why i am this monstrously tall yes. um so let's go ahead and let's get on to the swarm keeper Ranger. the swarm keeper yeah. is i think this is what do you think i think this is super cool i like it i i think it's really cool it's first off it's a conceptual niche that's not yeah. been filled uh there's a lot of different ways you can reflavor these critters <laughs> uh i like that they're not just insects and creepy crawlies but squids birds um yeah. I, I what about terriers like little dogs you know like for yeah. one if there's a DD world you know that there's something like a goblin terrier where people were like listen we got a breed oh. of dog that's tough it's tenacious and does and immune to poison you know well, why not this little chickens why not this little chickens um <laughs> There's a lot. I mean, I, uh, Jeremy Crawford suggested fireflies. You know, it doesn't have to be spiders oh, yeah, or yeah. wasps. Sure. Um, I could see myself doing ravens uh, for my yeah, character. Ravens, ravens. Yeah. Like, oh, definitely. This is like a if you want like the really spooky ranger who just like explodes into a cloud of ravens um, or crows. This yeah, is, there's this a lot. Be, of, there's a lot of cool flavor here. Yeah, you could be like the super gothy, edgy ranger here, or you could be the completely you know at home with the fey wild nature yeah. itself there's a lot of, make one of the most comical super comical <laughs> weird character too all with this mice so, mice yeah, mice right yeah i I, I saw <laughs> <laughs> really fast snails yes i so i saw someone in chat asking like what would we what would we do for like dark uh you know dark swarms you know for like a dark and gritty game or the whimsical for me whimsical it would definitely be something cute and furry if i could have a ferret then that would be oh, great yeah. you know swarm a chinchilla mm-hmm. it kittens can i have a kitten can i be swarm oh my kittens? god kitten ranger like not cats Kitt- kittens kitten swarm <laughs> keeper it's maggots it's so good <laughs> yeah it's so good uh hermit crabs <laughs> <Squirrel they're adorable. laughs> yes hermit um, crabs very good yeah uh, oh and that yeah, would explain I, the pinching when you hit someone with a sword <laughs> right yeah you, just swarm all you over don't want to get hit by i used i used to have, uh hermit crabs when i was a little kid uh, until i yeah. found out the horrible story about hermit crabs they live up yes. to like what 40 years out yeah, of captivity yeah. and live one year in captivity don't buy Oof. hermit crabs yeah, I, I bought some at South Padre. I did not know that when I bought them. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. Geez. It's I, when I read that, I'm just like, oh my god. Wow. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so we are dark, So your dark, so your dark swarm, uh, uh, swarm keeper keeps hermit cramps, and <laughs> yeah, I I think I, I would be hard pressed not to go with worms, just because like spiders, I feel oh. like. Are enough of the purview of the drow, but like worms, grubs, caterpillars, yeah. uh, anything that's squishy lice. and juicy, lice, yeah, ticks, yeah. you know, just sort of like, like that, I, I, I would play them as like a, a bum, just sort of like, a, and, and, oh, I, yeah, yeah. and I like that they're a ranger and not a druid because like the range, I'm playing a ranger right now. And what I love about them is their versatility, their, I mean, I'm, and I'm playing it by the book ranger as well none of this revised stuff and i love their versatility i love their uh just the fact that they scream a, a person of adventure like a, to me of all the classes they're the one where it's like oh we got an adventure all right well i'm ready to go right now i don't need anything i'm good to go self-sufficient got my uh you know got my weapons and everything and so like swarm keeper i can see it as yeah you've got these critters and you've learned this sort of trick for controlling them uh, but I do like that you can use your spell slots to get extra uses of the features. 
yeah. love that and that might make me dip druid just for some extra spell slots i love most of them are third or fourth level so i guess that wouldn't necessarily work but again bad Ranger. dream play batman yeah. uh oh, so the, bats. Uh, anyway. yeah bats man <laughs> I'm just like seeing no one talk about bat swarms. I'm like, I love oh that. Like, how, how cool is that ranger? Yeah. 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 Uh, so fairy fire web gaseous form gaseous form. Um, you know, people were wondering about I'm like gaseous form. Basically you just reflavor that as you become you, you explode and you be actually become the swarm. So think of yeah. it that way. Yes. Yeah. Uh, giant insect makes sense. Insect plague makes sense. Uh, but the, there was, there then these are expect. very specific onto the flavor. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if giant insect lets me, you know, I, yeah, that's a, that's one you don't normally use on beasts. Cause uh, I don't know if animal growth is still a spell. I have no idea. I don't think, I don't know if it is still a spell. I don't know if it is I think a spell. This is my problem with running every edition. I would like years. text in here that says <laughs> the, the following spells should be reflavored based off your swarm. So giant yeah. insect, for the purposes sure of the game of the should yeah. work on any tiny creature um insect plague should be you know it could be a bat plague because right. of course you would want that it doesn't make sense otherwise so i think yeah. the dm needs to, to understand that buy-in um wow it, okay we, i'm moving along so we got gather a swarm mm. gather the swarm <laughs> this is really cool oh yeah yes that's my input on this third yeah. level yeah, um, hey, yeah. I, I don't have much else to say about it other than it's really cool to just the the. It's clearly like the you know replacing your I don't know, it lets you replace, uh, hunter's mark, which I found with like the monster slayer, was like the fact that you get your own mark as monster slayer ranger was like yeah. Oh, wait a minute, I like I love Zephyr Strike. Like it'd be nice to to do something else it'd with be my nice concentration. Nice to be used it once in a while. <laughs> yeah, and so like uh, I, you know, I I purposefully stay away from the obvious choices when I play uh, classes like the Ranger, and so I I would love a feature like Gathered Swarm. Like yeah, come on. Yeah, right. You're you're getting you're agitating your swarm. You're, you're getting some extra damage. Um, mm -hmm. I believe it's force damage. Am I right? Looks like it. Yeah, yeah. creature yeah. force. Yeah, so you get a little force damage. Which is good. Force damage with poison. your attack. I would expect poison, than poison, and so I'm glad glad to see force. Yeah, yeah. I never want to see poison damage. <laughs> uh, no, no, no one wants to see poison damage. But, um, the the <laughs> writhing tide at seventh level. Uh, first off, that's the best description yet yes. in a subclass for D and D. Easily the writhing tide. Uh, you know, you you can increase your walking. So your swarm helps you. You can either increase your walking speed by ten feet, which means like you're running on worms or snails or rats. Um, oh or God, you you gain disgusting. climbing speed. I know <laughs> you gain a climbing speed uh, up difficult surfaces. Um, uh, you, or you gain a fly, <laughs> flying speed up to ten feet. Yeah, uh, hovering on bats, just like going levitating uh, on bats, is right. so <laughs> creepy. Or whatever. Um, super flavorful has a, a decent amount of utility. Yeah, um, and and so like by this point when i'm reading the class i'm like what game is this like you're inflicting some horrific conditions on your enemies like this is well, this is certainly appropriate for ravenloft uh yeah. i can see this you know dealing with like if you did like scarabs or desert beetles it working for like dark uh -huh. sun or something like that or you like gosh especially if oh never mind you're in the I, Feywild, I, I, ladybugs yeah. ladybugs mm -hmm. man ladybugs Just yeah a swarm of ladybugs mm -hmm. uh scuttling eyes is pretty decent <laughs> Tell, tell me about scuttling eyes. This is a, this so this, is a love level. <laughs> this is the one where it's like you 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 sort of like can take one of your swarm and send it off on its own, almost like a uh, you know like a chain uh, warlock or or yeah. you know, anyone five familiar, and uh, you know it moves, climbs, swims, can uh, sense uh, you know shares your senses and can telepathically relay them back to you. And it gives all these things about what its AC is, how it does uh, stealth checks and the like. And yeah. um, I like that having, that, having I, that in the class. Yes, I like having it there, right? Where where instead of sort of like go oh, go find this animal, and you know look at those stats, it shares yours because a lot of the animals they're not really actually they don't have, a lot of them don't have stealth proficiency things like that or perception that sort of thing. I like that this does, and um, and then you can magically teleport to okay here it is you can magically teleport to an unoccupied space within five feet 
of where the spirit disappeared if you dismiss it early. Uh, so it otherwise lasts an hour. If you dismiss it before then, uh, you can sort of like swap places with it. And you could get yourself in a yeah. lot of trouble with this thing, which I love because, yeah. <laughs> and after all that you read, you get to hear, and I'm like, that's powerful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's the, that is the, I mean, that's as close to scry and fry like as i've seen yet in in kind of uh fifth edition where it's sort of like all right i know where you are uh it, it's not the whole party right so no. but yeah, this is yeah, great yeah. for setting up ambushes for sort of like oh yeah our ranger's gonna go hide and gonna go like send their aunt <laughs> and like yeah. crawl around the dungeon hide in this closet we're gonna attack two rounds later come out and take out their leaders right kind yeah, of thing. Again, again it does have that kind of edgy dracula feel of a vampire flying yeah. through the window as a bat and then yes. becoming you know becoming the vampire and yeah this is a new polymorph but it is that same kind of narrative mm -hmm. feel yeah you know definitely. like yeah like a, a fly you literally are a fly on the wall yeah. with this feature yes <laughs> <laughs> so this is very powerful this may be like the most powerful actually in in terms of utility i think for this entire subclass sure like, uh, yeah again and I, I don't think uh, it doesn't have a distance on it it's basically as far uh, as it flies man yeah yeah as far as it can get in up to i guess i don't know you know 59 minutes in 59 seconds. yeah yeah how far <laughs> can you get in 59 minutes well now we're getting into some interesting conversation sure well the yeah. dmg will help us in that regard i think anyway yeah oh, by so the way there the is no minions... animal growth it's i'm so sad about that oh anyway, sad. My so <laughs> storm of minions feels like the right capstone 15th level you just create a big old sphere right of your minions they're doing you know that they're doing necrotic damage mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. it does require a constitution saving throw if they fail they're blinded that's super creepy um oh yeah you can, you can shut an area down yes very i love this, this, is good this crowd you know, control. It's, it's good crowd control it's sort of like it's it's a catch-all class and i can see like it's not for every group it's not for every campaign but this is sort of one of those classes where you'd have a player that sits down with it and just like dedicates themselves has a good concept and makes it work then they will find ways to use these tools they will find opportunities and like just because you can look at a class like and, and this is based off my very limited sort of like people's feedback on this or like if um just because you don't it doesn't it isn't obvious like how you put the features together like what you do with them or like how the class works doesn't like let someone play it and find out because it very well may be that that it requires like a player's set of eyes in a specific campaign to sort of see where this could be valuable and yeah i just love the theme of this whole class it's great yeah it's it's a uh, great thing now uh yeah. 15 minutes was not going to do the revived rogue justice and i'm just gonna like i'm just gonna knock something out of the park right now we go. I know everyone wants to be able to play a revenant for every single class. That's not going to happen. There is going mm. to be probably no race of the revenant. However, I will say, you know, I know it exists in UA before, but if there is any class that cheats death, wizards already can do it with wish and clone. Clerics can be resurrected by their deity. Warlocks could have potentially their patron bring them back from the dead. Sure. You know, druids reincarnate anyways and stop aging. You have all these character classes that can easily be like a revenant in some ways and be brought back. Mm. If someone is going to trick death, death itself, or end up being a servant of it, it's going to be a rogue. Yeah, and I, I like think that. the revived yeah. makes a lot of sense for the rogue. And I do like this class a lot. And I do love it because I literally have a character based on the concept of he dies over and over and over and over again. He has been around mm. since first edition. And somehow he keeps on getting back. In fact, the whole story of why this happens is because he tricks a very, very powerful entity into agreeing to never let him die. <laughs> so this is that to a T. Um, yes. Yes. As in Todd. So tokens of past lives. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, you, you immediately get like an extra proficiency. Very flavorful. Makes a lot of sense not overly mm -hmm. powerful at all you're already oh. a rogue and now you're even a little bit roguier rogue because you have this memory Certainly. of a past life yeah and you can really play with that you can have you can have a skill that makes zero sense um 
because you were somebody else in a previous life. You looked at Revive yeah. Nature. <laughs> it's, just, oh <laughs> it's not overpowered. <laughs> no, no, no. You're and you know you're not undead, right? Yeah. But it's sort of like it's it's similar to me. It's comparable to. Um, like Warforged, right? Like, yeah, okay, you have absolutely. some, you, you can, you're not like immune to poison. There's still, you know, some poisons yeah. that can affect you. I, you know, the not needing to eat, drink, or breathe, breathe is really the big one because yeah. that's the sort of like, uh, I shaved it all off, by the way, is what I did my facial hair. So I just keep saying it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's freaking me out. I'm trying not, yeah. I'm trying not to, yeah, we'll, you have just can't like... we'll have another talk talks about that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway yes I, I forget who has seen me uh with it and without uh yet so breath is, is one of those where that's going to be something that like oh anytime you're underwater anytime you're anywhere where you can't breathe this is a pretty strong feature but also like i would expect it from something that's partially quasi dead you know yeah. uh and so it's a I, I like it i to me this is my spaceman rogue I'm gonna take this guy. Yeah. I'm a spell jammer. You know, they're just gonna. Yeah, I'll, I'll go scavenge that wreck. That wreck over there. No, don't worry he, about he, the air. I'll be fine. He can survive space. This is the the rogue that gets in through the sewers. Yeah. You yes. Know? Like he is yeah. SEAL Team Six rogue. He's yeah. Not think of all the alive. disgusting things. Yeah. 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 Exactly. The and then you just need things. to. <laughs> you just need to brood for four hours. You just need to like find a corner and grim it. Well, <clears throat> Also, yeah, right, like, like, okay, like, man, playing dead, really. I mean, what's funny is okay. this is like kind of an extension of the shadow sorcerer, like the source shadow sorcerer for, forgets to blink, right? But this, this is the real deal. But yeah, play dead, just lay down, don't breathe. Just lay down. <laughs> oh, that's a good thing, right? Oh, that's not a bad. That's a setup yeah. right there. Oh yeah, you're gonna pretend to be a corpse and get brought into the death temple while we rob it blind. <laughs> just saying, just look like you, you, you get the feet, mage initiate, the little. I can't say it. Yeah. <laughs> Press Yeah, a little bit of illusion magic, and you make you smell yourself smell like a rotted corpse. Yeah. Or look very deathly gross. Um, yeah. Man, but you can sneak yourself in in a really weird way. This is your kind of like feign death Loki kind of thing you could do with this if you want to. Oh, yes, yes. Bolts, bolts from bolts. the grave. What do you think? Oh, man. Okay. So, you like, bolts you're, from the you're grave. feeling this? Needs. Right. I feel kind of. I, it's random. It's random. But, I, but arcane trickster exists, and I want another magical rogue. Then certainly, there. Uh, yeah, and, another magical and, rogue is needed. Yeah. And I would say the arcane trickster is like the Feywild magical rogue. This is the, you know, edgy, edgy, dark, sure, grim, yeah, dark, dark yeah. rogue. Mm -hmm. So I, I like the bolt for the grave. Actually, I think it's just like a random thing. I won't necessarily put in this, but like if you like. What does your bolt look like? Like now I'm sure, starting to sure. wonder, like, what does the bolt that you fire mine as is, that character would, shoot? I feel like mine would be their ribs. That it would be <laughs> they pull a rib oh out and it's God. like sharp and he throws it at him. Oh man, if you want to get literal <laughs> with this, yeah, it could so horrible. Like when, like when I read the feature, that's what I thought it would be. It would be or, or like I take out a, a you know something, uh, you know, and it, it becomes an arrow. Right, like as you pull a bone out, it stretches into an arrow. That oh fire. my god! No, you just pull I, a fingernail until it gets long, mm -hmm. like a spear. That's what I. That's what I want out of this. Not like not I, I, I. I can see that's why. I thought. <laughs> so gross. That's what I thought. I was like, that's awesome. I take out my big toenail and I throw it. <laughs> Listen, like I, my yellow I fungus love, uh, toe. I love any kind of body horror magic. Uh, Biomancy is sorely missing from fifth edition, although re reflavored <laughs> druid is is a good uh, stopgap. Anyway, I'll leave it at right. that. I, uh, so, yeah, turning your sneak attack damage into basically yeah. necrotic. It's a 30-foot range. You know, it has all that flavor. Now, the wording may have to change because, okay, if you've already used your sneak attack, you can't use this feature if you're using a cunning action. However, a cunning action doesn't have to happen on your turn. Certainly. So the question right. becomes, can you use the cunning, uh, uh, the sneak attack after you've used your cunning action? And do, so I think some people are afraid that you can do sneak attack effectively twice in one turn or one round, you know, one turn around. And you can't. I don't, there's no, no. way they're going to let that happen. No, so I don't see that happening. If it's not either. worded that way, this, that is not the intent. You are not going to be able to do 
two sneak attacks. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of a minute. What are some what are some situations that you can use cutting action not on your turn? Because I'm trying to think of those. Well, like, let's see. You you have learned how to unleash bolts of necrotic energy within with, you know with your revived body immediately mm -hmm. after your cunning action. You can make a ranged spell attack against a creature within thirty feet of you, provide you haven't used your sneak attack this turn. Gotcha. Yeah. So I think for me, it's a you you've uh, used your cutting action as a dash, right? And so I've you know I've moved I guess sixty feet. Now I can make, or I moved thirty feet. Now I can make it a spell. It I can make the sneak attack. And, and then, cutting action is based off bonus. Your bonus action, correct? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, but you can determine if the bonus action is first or after. Sir, I believe so. Yeah. Usually. So I think that's where the confusion is. So yeah, I think it's, I think it is because it's right now I'm looking at something that's like okay, what is the situation in which I would use my bonus action and not have a and not not otherwise get sneak attack that I wouldn't make my attack, and so yeah, uh, yeah. and then um, so I see some people in chat are sort of like seeing how this kind of gets on bonus action to do a cunning action to do sneak attack. And then an action to ready an attack, which can also get a sneak attack. But you can already do that with, say, Commander Strike or an attack of uh, opportunity attack. Like you can yeah. get your per turn is turns a loose turn is a loose term uh, right. in in Fifth Edition, and it's and it's um, and because it has overlap with like turn used to have a prior you know concrete definition it was 10 rounds of combat was a turn right and so uh i can see how some people might be confused on that but turn just means like anytime you no. get to roll the dice and do something that's a turn the wording like is, is it a reaction specific. it's this yeah. last sentence that everyone is forgetting this uses yeah. your sneak attack for this turn oh for one so you right. can't yeah. use this first and then do a sneak attack yeah and it explicitly yeah. says you can't use sneak attack and then use this like there's sure. no there's no wording of this that allows and this is why i've been seeing like in, in posts and on youtube comments yeah, you get yeah. two sneak attacks you don't and also they yeah, would never yeah. let that happen they would rewrite it but with this wording sure. you're only doing it once sorry just just hopping on my hobby horse about this <laughs> yeah no no i no, i get that and i am seeing uh, pop-ups in chat about like sort of like okay someone else has to set up the uh you know you using your other one versus this is on your own i can see that i, I mean swashbuckler can set up their own sneak attack i mean no it's only you know uh, yeah you know in regular combat not on a reaction or anything but the thing that i'm really seeing with this is if you also combine this with like other high damage attacks that don't need to rely on sneak attacks so I, you know if you have a way to get a cantrip for instance mm -hmm. you get your sneak attack plus your cantrip by using this and that's strong because yeah. you're you know that that's kind of a and now i I know that from personal experience only because I played an arcane trickster right after Sword Coast came out and it's like booming blade. It's clearly what I'm going to be using when I combat sneak attack and yeah. getting the spell dice plus the sneak attack was everybody was like, oh my yeah. God, at the table at the time, we were like, oh my God, that's so much. But nah, I don't even think that that's over. No. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I think it's flavorful um, and weird and I, I, I kind of like it. Um, <laughs> yes, so because I'm a weirdo. And I'm strongly thinking Spones. of making my my main Averin uh, just just this, just this rogue. Like you know, yeah. removing all the magic from him and just making him a rogue again, like he used to be, um, mm -hmm. is very sorely tempting. So yes. connect with the dead. I I quite like this a lot. You you can oh, yeah. basically create a spirit link with someone who's dead. Uh, you basically can speak with the dead without any spell components, anything like that. This is very useful. I'm sorry, but like speak with the dead. You run into a lot of dead in D and D, and they have a lot yeah. of secrets. And that you can have a lot of conversations and figure out like, okay, this is how you get through this dungeon. You didn't make it, but maybe I can. You know, this opens up a lot of role playing opportunities. Um, you can find a grave of someone, you know, now you're thinking a different headspace than a wizard. Like a wizard has so many other things they can do, but if this like very specific speak with the dead character, uh, you can really hone in on some really like smart, clever things to do. Um, yeah. They're very yeah. spooky and you're kind of a medium at this point, right? It really is. And I like that the, the class, like uh, when I'm looking through this and, and we brought this up you know, at first, like this makes sense that it's a rogue. To me, here's where I start seeing why this is a rogue because mm. it's sort of a collection of abilities. It's sort of like 
it, it, most classes have a theme based around sort of like it's either a profession or like a a, a, a shtick that they sort of you know build around whereas to me the the revives is just like you used you used to be dead like what are the implications of that yes and we'll turn that into a class and like i to me it can't be a revenant race option because i wouldn't put connect with the dead no. at, as something uh, you would get from just being whatever this is something that you've cultivated all right i had this experience now i'm growing i'm deepening my connection with death i exist in this weird liminal space between life and death right i'm kind of you know it's it's a i like it i don't i don't yeah. think it's overpowered i i think it's kind of actually underpowered uh, it's got a lot of role playing opportunities guys. yeah it's it great, could be yeah. very powerful but yeah and and every time you use this you learn how to speak or read or write one other language or you gain one skill or tool proficiency you didn't have before or you gain proficiency with one saving throw of your choice because it reactivates something from your past again every time you talk mm -hmm. to someone from the dead you reconnect and i can see like Avon literally has had my my personal character has been alive like he, he's been through 20 iterations right he's got 20 past yeah. lives he could draw on knowledge and be like mm -hmm. oh i know this thing i totally forgot but at this point i i'm a little you know not everything's working upstairs anymore i've been mm -hmm. resurrected one too many times um and so <laughs> and every time i talk to the dead i like oh, i remember something else yeah. audience with death holy cow this is so i cool. think everybody should have this that's what you say that death is insane <laughs> is yeah audience, I love this. audience of death is insane you you have advantage on death saving throws um and whenever you make a death saving throw your spirit can ask an entity of death a question that can be answered with yes or no the entity's love answers tr truthfully using the knowledge of all those who have died nice i love it there's no no that's all i got i love it that's all i got this I, lo so I love crazy. it it's, <laughs> it's 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 abilities like audience with the dead that made me go i'm taking all the class abilities that i know that no one like no one's going to make a revived uh, rogue in this campaign i'm going to take these class abilities and i'm going to turn them into feats that certain people in the world know they can teach you so you can like go to uh, someone oh, there's my name. uh you can like go to someone and find a way like okay teach me the secret of death teach me the secret yeah. of conversing with death. like i like that for you know and it's a good way it's for me it's a good uh you know even though no one's gonna might play this class you can still use the features um yeah. from it i love this this is great it's it's obviously a big role-playing sort of heavy thing but i can also see a bunch of people starting to find situations where they can put their revived rogue into dangerous situations so that they have to make david death saves exactly things, including like Including self Constantine boost. moment, you know, like where you like, you, you, if you want to look at the movie where he's actually like, he literally has them yeah. electrocute him, right? You yeah. know, in the electric chair so he can see where this other demon is. There's another example of that actually, um, you know, Flatliners. This, this is kind of like Flatliners, um, right, not, not yeah. the remake. Um, <laughs> so. I seen the remake. But, uh, but yeah, you also when you go to zero, we're, we're, we're wrapping up real soon. Yeah. I feel I feel Tito or someone watching me in Pelham uh right now yeah. i can feel their pressure so when you go to zero so. hit points you can actually change one of your personality traits one of your ideals one of your bonds one of your flaws oh my god it's just one paragraph again pure role playing my personality changes i'm a little bit different yeah. now i'm like a little bit cockier I, I can play this different there's a role playing element to why ethereal jaunt wow <sighs> Yeah. So you can just jump. It, it, I don't think it's overly sure. overpowered, but you can jump into the, the ethereal plane as a rogue and pop out. Yeah. The only thing I would wish to see out of this class that I've not seen is self resurrection. I think it would be fun to be like, you're dead and come back. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. not like one of those you hit zero and no, you're at one, but like, no, you, you hit zero. You flatlined, you're dead. Your spirit made the trip to the gray wastes and judged and all that crap. But I came back on my own. I didn't need a pearl or a diamond or a god. I just have done it so many times. <laughs> I can make the trip. You, you do become, <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I'm like, okay, this teleportation ability is really great. But yeah, if, at 17th level, you just, if you die, you come back. I, yeah, yeah. I think I might, I think I might just throw that on. If like, come on, it's epic level by that point. You're 17th, 18th level, you know, yeah. it's probably the end of the campaign, if you know, or, or you're moving on to bigger and better things. Give them a self rest. Well, come on. It, okay, this is this is what I would say to, to Jeremy Crawford. 
<laughs> and no one would like this necessarily, but ethereal jump out. Also, like if you die, you come back at first level. <laughs> You've oh, lost sure, a level. Yeah. You lost level, a level. Yeah. Like there's a cost. There's so much. But, all right. Well, that wraps up Todd Talks. Clearly, my camera does not want me to be in the you know to be talking. So, uh, and uh, we are over time. Thank you, Jim Davis. Check out all things WebDM. You're freaking right, me out yeah. without. I will assimilate to this new uh, paradigm of you being beardless. Uh, Listen, so- I had to get rid of it. I had 21 years, and it had to go just to prove a point. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, we all move <laughs> on until our next Unearthed Arcana. Thank you, everyone, for watching Todd Talks. <laughs> <laughs>